There is music hidden in the trees, waiting to be coaxed from wood that has been shaped by time. Wood that awaits only the touch of a master craftsman to reveal its song. But wood does not give up its secrets easily. As the late 17th century Cremona masters, Amati, Guarneri, and Stradivari discovered in perfecting their techniques. It is only with infinite patience that this carefully chosen wood is transformed into art. And now is the moment. The trees have been waiting a long time. The Italian masters likely began their days much like John Sype does in Charlotte working in the demanding and meticulous craft for which makers' marks like Stradivarius have become hallmarks. He gives birth to a violin that will likely still be making beautiful music and touching the human heart 300 years from now. It's inspired. In other words, when Stradivari made some of his better quality instruments, that was the day he felt good. And he felt like working on that piece inspirational work and that's the way you get your good instruments and you have to learn about many things not only the woodworking the craft but you have to learn about sound I know what I like in the sound but I also know that a concert violinist, he wants a range of sound, like a rainbow. So the violin has to be able to do what he wants it to do, his interpretation of the music that he's playing. I can take wood from just about any part of the world and come up with a decent sound because I understand the physics that they go into the making of good violin. Density of the wood, the grain, slow growth, fast growth, higher the altitude, the harder the wood, which may be good or it may not be, depending on the maker and what he's trying to achieve in the sound. Wood, even 10, 15, 20, 50 years old, still got a lot of life in it. And you carve it in a shape that it didn't grow. It has a new shape. It has to adjust to that new shape. In my opinion, you're not supposed or should make it too quickly. about 70 pieces of different wood in that violin. And they're all foreign to each other. And they have to adjust to each other and it takes time. Father time has the last word. You have to be patient, but you want to practice your trade. And I think it may come on you quicker the more experience you have. One day it'll dawn on you, gee, this is the way it's supposed to be done. And look how much better that is. I would not attempt to make someone a violin less than six or seven months. This is more a Stradivari model with the scroll. And the coloring is autumn gold. And that's sort of typical of Cremona Italian instruments. This violin is uh, more Guarneri than either one of the other two because of the elongated F hole and it's sort of pointed inward. But they're all very similar, but there are some differences. 
for one who knows the studs violins, they can pick it up in about five seconds. The Stradivari was known for not only bringing the tone of the instruments to a very high state of perfection, but its varnish has been discussed an awful lot. And that's the glory of Cremona, is that varnish. And no one to this day has uh, surpassed it either. Every maker should have his own varnish. It can't be too hard or too soft. It can't be tacky. And it has to polish up well. It's got to sound well. You see, we don't play the varnish, but yes, you do. You play the varnish stuff that's on that violin. But one other thing, it would oxidize. It would change colors over the years. You can see a brown, you can see a yellow, you can see a red, an orange. Every year that passes by, it should look better if you've got a good varnish. It is delicate, but yet it is strong. When a violin is tuned up, where the bridge sits, there's about 70 pounds of tension down on that. Now, it is fragile, but when it's completed, it's pretty strong. And it has to be to stand that tension. Of course, the first thing you see about a violin is visual. But then you play it, It's so smooth. It can make you happy. It can make you cry. A lot of people call it the king of instruments because you can do so much with it. Now, violin will come unplayed. You don't play a violin, say, once every month or two. It's not gonna do its best. It has to be played. The player knows that. They practice that intonation, the overtone, because that's what makes the violin carry. It takes on energy. It's been said that a new instrument cannot sound well. That is not true. A good new violin will be a good old violin. If you're gonna make a poor violin, or as we country boys would say, a gourd, it's always gonna be a gourd. I don't care how many hundred years you play on it. When you go up that neck, if it croaks like a bullfrog, it's not much. If it's got a good, clear sound, that's where you separate the good ones from the bad ones. I made the first one in 1960. I worked at home on the kitchen table. Cut my hands all up. But the more I learned about the thing, the more intrigued I became with it. It's been sort of a spiritual journey. I think now I'm making the best violins that I've ever made. I'm satisfied with the sound that I have. I like to hear my violins played. I like to hear people say they like my violins. But I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna see if I can make a better one.